It's Monday morning at New Zealand's newest veterinary practice. Possibly looking at Wednesday yeah, next week if that's going to suit you. Well, we can okay. fix them on that. Okay, thanks a lot. Bye. Jeff Woodhouse recently returned from England to set up Remarkable Vets. They've been open for three months and already words getting around the small rural community. No worries. See ya. Hello, Remarkable Vets. While Jeff and his sidekick Alicia are organising the day's appointments, a team of workers have arrived to tidy up the clinic. This used to be a rental property and it badly needs a makeover. The crew are fitting new lights, tidying up the garden, <laughs> weeds are us, <laughs> and rebuilding the back fence. Jeff's day is just getting underway and he's already in the thick of it. Wow. Okay. Just had a call from a, cl a client uh, who's, as you might have heard about, an hour and three quarters away driving with a horse with suspected colic. It's a much loved horse and he really wants to get me there soon and it doesn't sound like money's any object so he's actually going to fly me down because I'm very close to the airport. It's going to arrange a chopper, which uh, would be my first chopper experience and I'm really looking forward to that. Remarkable Vets is a mixed practice, half town, half country. And while Jeff's getting used to travelling large distances, this job is out of the ordinary. Most city vets travel by car, but Jeff's quickly learning that a chopper is often the fastest way to get to an emergency. So a 90 minute ride is turned into a 20 minute skip down the lake. And a spectacular one at that. Jeff's heading into the flatlands beyond Glen Orkey, a fast growing town to the west of Queenstown, right at the tip of Lake Wakatipu. Yeah, hey, Jeff, how you doing? Sorry. Nice to meet you. Hey, nice to meet you, yeah. This is Bradley. Okay. Now, you've been, you've felt he's had a bout of colic yeah, this morning? Yeah, oh, I think he's been rolling around a bit, and, uh, and uh, he just, he's just not, not, not looking as good as he was this, yesterday and this morning. Uh, Bradley has been spending most of the day lying yeah, down. Yeah. He's clearly in pain, leaving his mind are quite worried. Equine manager Bruce decided to call in the vet, just in case the condition worsened. The owner of the horse lives in the United States and has left strict instructions to spare no costs if Bradley is sick. Let's have a look at his colour. Woo there, we went. Woo there. We're just blanching it to see how quickly gums fill up again with blood. Yeah. What does that show? Well, we're looking for a nice, nice pink colour mm -hmm. and, yep. and a fairly rapid refill. Right. And it just gives me an idea of his, of his uh, uh, blood perfusion, you know, of his, oh, of yeah, his blood yeah. pressure and, yeah. and it, how compromised okay. he may or may oh, not be. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. okay. I'm just going to go straight and have a listen to his bowels. Yeah, go ahead. The owner, she loved him so much, she said, if anything goes wrong, just get the vets down here. I know colic can be, can be fatal in some, oh. some cases. It's okay. It actually sounds good in the sense it's got some good gut sounds coming mm -hmm. through on both sides. They are, do seem a little bit overactive, so um, just stop them from eating for a sec. <coughs> They do seem a bit overactive, mm -hmm. so they may well be spasming, and that, that could be the cause of his right. pain. Right? And sometimes, uh, sometimes just, just tiny alterations in diet can mm -hmm. can cause mm -hmm. those sorts of problems. Mm -hmm. And I mean, at the moment, where he's not um, where he's not in work, he hasn't got high needs. Mm -hmm. We might just lay off the any supplementary feed for a moment, just let him use some of the part, you know, take the pasture. Okay. Yep. But we'll walk him over there and, okay. and just. I mean, thanks. Yeah, thanks. Come on. Jeff will examine Baxter's bowels, just to be safe. Back at the clinic, work's progressing nicely on the fence. Just two months into business, and Remarkable Vets is flat out. Alicia, a trained veterinary nurse, is working the surgery just to keep up. 
even if Leo the Labrador isn't so keen on her attention. And as usual, Diesel, the clinic cat, doesn't miss a thing. Just wait. Good boy. What's this? Hey? Alicia's often called on to practice her nursing skills. Luckily, Leo's a great patient. No, no, Leo. Good boy. Good boy. Hey. A happy lab and a scalpel blade can be a dangerous combination. Good boy. Good boy. Come on. We've, we've cut them. Wait, we've wait, got wait, 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 wait. Hey, hey, stay still. Enough. But it's tough for a dog to sit still when his tail has a mind of its own. Hey, good boy. Well done. What was the fuss? There you go. What was the fuss? <laughs> Thank you. Back in the field, Jeff diagnoses Bradley with an acute form of colic. He decides to give him a shot of gut relaxant to settle the symptoms. Then Bradley will just have to wait for the colic to pass. Specific medication is also prescribed, and the owner in the States can be told to rest easy. There are lots and lots of different causes of colic. Colic yeah. just being a term for tummy ache. You know, it ranges from totally benign and, and going to self-resolve very quickly to, to potentially f fatal surgical colics. Um, and the problem is that when they first start showing those rolling and sweating signs, you actually don't know what you're dealing with. So I think you're right to, you know, you're definitely right to have them checked out, especially in circumstances where the owner's away. OK, Bruce. All right. All done. And uh, just keep in touch. We'll hear from you yeah, about three hours time. Thanks, thanks for coming so okay. quickly. Yeah. No worries. Lovely. Thanks for sending the yeah. transport. With business taken care of, Jeff's free to enjoy the taxi ride home. The horse is going to be fine, I think. By the time we got there, it was over most of its crisis point. It turned out to be what I believe to be a spasmodic colic. You know, it happens a lot. And fortunately, this is one of those nice ones that's going to have a happy outcome. They were right to get it seen to early, and I think just fantastic that the resources were there to get us down quickly. We'll be waiting over the next few hours to make sure that, that things carry on as well as I think that they're going to, um, but I'm optimistic. It makes my day incredibly interesting and, and uh, you know, for a fantastic experience all round. Renovations are progressing at Remarkable Vets. The fence is being modified, the lawn's mowed, and with a team of gardeners on the case, the weeds are disappearing quickly. Under Diesel's watchful eye, of course. But things aren't looking quite so good for this little chap. Achilles arrived at the clinic last week, a stray kitten with a nasty abscess on his back. While Jeff patched him up and gave Achilles a second chance at life, he's just suffered another setback. He's down to two-wheel drive. He's clearly got some pressure on his spinal cord. I guess we know where it's coming from because it's going to come from around that abscess site. It's quite odd that it should happen just so suddenly when he was doing so well and the abscess had been drained and settling down. It'll be interesting to see if there's any more change when we re-X-ray him. I still got hope, you know, because he's got a lot of sensation there. He's got a lot of pain perception, yeah, and he's happy and he's comfortable. He's he's able to function, so we can give the body some time to sort this out. But um, uh, he's sort of hanging. It's on a knife edge. Despite his obvious handicap, Achilles is a gutsy little fellow. Apart from getting stuck every now and then, he seems to be making the most of his situation. But without a functioning rear end, he'll have trouble surviving in the big world. So unless he shows signs of improvement soon, Jeff will have to make the tough call. In the meantime, Jeff has a slightly prickly problem to deal with. He thought he had been dragging his left rear right. leg, so left rear. But he's got himself curled up. <laughs> the hedgehog has gone into defensive yeah. mode, so the first trick will be getting him to uncurl. We can do a tickle <laughs> technique. I don't know how you're going to put it into <laughs> I seem to recall there is some technique for making them uncurl. Yes, but I never mastered it. Perhaps, perhaps with this boy, you wave some cat meat under his nose. Good and me. Like... About 11 o'clock, I took the dog out, and there were two more hedgehogs. There was a bit of arguing about who was going on. Right. I don't know if it was. You said your son felt that he was dragging that leg? 
My, my son thought he had been. When I, right. when I watched him, he just sort of appeared to be rolling okay. drunk, really. Rolling <laughs> drunk, right. <laughs> Jeff's faced with a dilemma. How do you examine a hedgehog who won't come out of a shell? Yes, we feel. There doesn't look to be any wounds there, though. The joint feels okay. At the moment, I don't see misery. I just see a, a sleepy hedgehog who's been eating well. A bit of a sore leg for some, one reason or another, but there's nothing that I can see that says this is really bad. Sure. So I, I think he deserves a bit more of a chance. Good. Okay. okay. And I think it's bodily fun. Yeah. If you just look after him with the food and water, then, then you can just observe what he's done. Mm. Give him as you've got in there, plenty of shelter, plenty of places to hide, you know, darkness, that sort of thing. Um, and uh, then if things are ticking along okay, then tomorrow you know, take him outside, outside and, and uh, let him go, but maybe continue to supply some food. Sure. Okay? Okay. Good. Sounds good. Yep. <laughs> Quite nice to hold, really. You fit in the once cup of your hand, that's yeah. yeah. Once you get the prickles in the right, <laughs> yeah, you've got to have them flying the right way. Dealing with a variety of species yeah, is just one of the challenges that Jeff faces in his new life as a country vet. Okay. Out in reception, it's hectic, but Alicia's baby Rottweiler, Bear, is learning how to stay relaxed around other animals. It's only a baby. Bear's slowly getting used to all the visitors, and with the business packed with clients, Jeff is struggling to keep up with the demand on his limited time. Bear watches the routine vaccinations, inoculations, neuterings and spayings that make up a large part of a vet's life. Incredibly, just when Jeff needed help, the universe provided as a new vet just happened to arrive in town. Hello. Hi, Nikki. Yes. Hey, nice to meet you. Jeff. Jeff. No, Nikki has moved here with her husband, a winemaker, and the young daughter. I did. How is it fine? Excellent. Yeah, That's good. Which is good. Yep. So you've just come to the area? We have. We arrived, um, my husband and I and our young daughter arrived about three months ago. Right. And uh, we relocated for my husband's work. Yeah. And yeah, I've just been looking for some veterinary work. I love my job. I certainly don't want to give it up. And I heard you were just starting off, so I right. thought I'd come in and meet you and just okay. see, you know, whether perhaps we could work something out or whether I could be of some use to you. Well, uh, there's no doubt. You know, we're a mixed practice, um, but we're essentially small animals with a, a bulk of horses, and then the farm animal side of it. Just the nature of the area is going to be less and less than that. But why don't we go through, we'll sit down and okay. we'll have a wee chat and just go through some finer points and, okay. and see where we go from there. Terrific. I think she's great and I think that it's a really lucky opportunity for me to have someone arrive in the area just at this time when, um, when I'm in the cusp of opening a practice and needing someone, you know, just to fill in a few hours here and a few hours there. So I, th I think she's going to slot in really nicely. I'll be in touch in a couple of days. Okay. okay. That'd be good. Look Great. forward to it. And if you can swing a paintbrush, it might get you earlier. Yeah. All right. It's another one of my main skills. <laughs> okay. See you later. Right. Cheers. Bye bye. It's awfully nice to come across someone who has a similar philosophy to myself. You know, who who I'd be happy to work for. So, yeah. No, hopefully, hopefully something will, will come of it. With another vet on board, maybe Jeff will finally be able to take a much-needed day off. The next morning, the gardening team are back to finish work on the outside of the clinic. Of course, Diesel's keeping a close eye on proceedings. And he's never afraid to venture an opinion. Nikki's been called into action already and is dealing with her first case, a dog that is to be spayed. Meanwhile, 100 kilometres away from base, Jeff's visiting Air Creek Station on the road to Invercargill. It's one of the biggest deer farms in the area, and today Jeff's been asked to analyse some deer. The farmer thinks that they may be lacking in copper. Deer need copper in their systems. Without it, young animals can get bone and joint disease. Jeff needs to determine how well the animals are storing copper supplements in their livers. So we'll just slip this in IV. 
I'll go down to the right. The first job is to anaesthetise the animals. These guys weigh over 90 kilos each, so it's not a straightforward task. The anaesthetic takes effect in just a few minutes. So we're just nice and quiet for a few minutes and let them settle down. Then I want them flying on their left. Yep, coming on the yep. right. I just let them get nice and sleepy and then we can just roll them over. Blood tests don't provide enough information, so Jeff will take liver samples from six animals, all from the same age group. Just putting a little bit of local anaesthetic in. Then comes the tricky bit. Jeff has to manoeuvre this needle directly into the deer's liver and remove a tiny sample of tissue from the animal. The samples will be sent to the lab for analysis, and the results will determine whether the herd need further copper supplements. Okay, yeah, yeah. How long this one here? So we're just now going through the um, through the sample, see how many bits of liver we've got, and whether there's enough to get a sample from. And it looks pretty good. So you don't actually need much. We've got multiple little bits in here. So that's perfect. That's uh, all we need for trace elements on that one. 20 minutes later, the deer are wide awake and happy to return to their herd. And often they'll, you know, like if cats are lame, they'll, they'll limp at home and yet they'll come in here. Nudge the cat has been fighting and has bitten her tongue. In somewhere where they feel quite threatened. But the good thing about the mouth is that um, it's got a really fantastic blood supply. So if they do do any sort of an injury to the mouth, they actually do heal within a very short period of time. How would that happen? It's an unusual um, injury, without a doubt. But she's probably bitten it herself, like bitten it herself. So it's no more scrapping for Nudge. I think she's a bit warm now, so she's come under the shed for some... Meet Priscilla, the Cooney Cooney pig. Unfortunately, Priscilla's forgotten to slip, slap and slop, and she's had a little too much summer sun. She's sunburned. In the 1980s, the Cooney Cooney was in serious danger of extinction. There were less than 100 purebred pigs left in New Zealand. Thanks to breeding programs, there are now more than 2,000 worldwide. Hi, you sweetie. A bit down in the dumps. Yeah, a bit down in the dumps, and she's finding it really hard to deal with this heat. She's always going under the trees, and she just seems a bit lethargic. Right. Okay. Anything on her nose? She's all right there, yeah. isn't she? Tips of ears look okay, don't they? I mean, these guys. They certainly do struggle in the heat because obviously they're carrying huge amounts of weight. Yeah. Lots and lots of fat cover, and um, you know, pigs' respiratory system is um, is is a nightmare really. You know, small lungs and and heat transfer is going to be pretty limited. So, you know, I yeah. think she, that she has to be a little sensible about it yeah. and stop trying to get a tan on the tummy because <laughs> yeah, she's only kind of she hasn't got the complexion for that. No. But um, I think it's a behavioural thing for you, honey. So with a few more days like this, I think that she'll um, as long as she's got water nearby and yeah. lots of shade, she should be all right. Yep, yeah, because physically she looks uh, she looks good. Yeah. Know, she looks in prime yeah. condition, and she yeah she seems pretty happy all round. So yeah, we'll just talk on the phone in a week's time and just see that she's learnt the way of the world for yeah. for a hot summer. Yeah. Poor old Priscilla. The tan will have to wait till next year. 
Bradley the horse recovered from his colic and was looking forward to a trek when his owner returned the following week. The dare's results showed that they needed a boost of copper. Achilles is showing a slight improvement and everyone's very hopeful. The clinic is looking a million dollars. And Priscilla the pig has recovered from her sunburn. Now she's looking forward to the winter. Next week on Remarkable Vets, it's fun and games at the Glen Orkey races. Jeff's called in to help with a stroppy horse. And the mystery of the disappearing bunny. He's got stuff for your puppies, for sheep and